I'm about to show you Excel Analytics Pro. First of all, once you've installed it and you open Excel, you probably end up here. What you'll see is a menu item that's called Excel Analytics Pro. Uh, if you, like me, also have installed the old free open source edition called just Excel Analytics, it can be shown at the same time and it can be used at the same time. So you don't have to choose one tool over the other. What you need to know, however, is that queries made in Excel Analytics is not compatible with queries made in Excel Analytics Pro. The reason for that is that Pro has been rebuilt from the ground up to uh, facilitate mass refresh of queries. What you need to do is go to the Excel Analytics Pro tab, the menu item here, and then you have, first of all, you have login. You have two different methods for logging in. You can use client login or you can use OAuth. As you see here, I'm already authenticated using OAuth. I'll show you how that works later. The next thing you have is settings. Here, first of all, you can select default profile. What that means is uh, if you use a, a login to Google Analytics frequently, but you usually want to report using one profile and you don't want to have to go in the list and select it every time, you can have it pre-selected. So say for instance I want to have xanalytics.com as pre-selected when I'm making a new query, I set that here. The second thing I need to do is I need to choose a render mode. Choosing a render mode does a couple of things. Um, if you choose vertical render mode, what that means is that you put all queries vertically i.e. you pick one column and you put all the queries below each other. So a, an example of that would be say you pick column A, you put the first query starting in cell A1, the second query in say A10, the third say in A20, etc. So vertical means queries are put in a single column and in an order so that you have to scroll down. The column you choose could be whichever, just on mix. Now, the horizontal render mode, what that means is that you're going to put your queries on a single line, but starting from different uh, columns. So I could choose, for instance, starting from row one, and I could have one query starting in A1, I could have the second query starting in J1, and I could have the third query starting in P1. Why this? Well, as you may understand, it's going to be quite complex when you're creating many queries. You're going to put them in a single sheet sometimes, and when you do a refresh of many queries for, say, a different date range, what can happen is that some queries will get additional rows or additional co columns, and some queries will have suddenly fewer rows and fewer columns. So everything is going to shift around in your sheet. And in order for it not to overwrite something or make a mess out of it, you need to select a render mode. So decide how you want to place your queries on the sheet before you start. The next thing you have to look at is proxy settings. If you're not behind a proxy, don't worry about this at all. You can just leave this. If you're behind a proxy, you probably know it already. Now, Xenix Pro will inherit the IE settings for proxies. But if you want to set it manually, you can do so here. Under the Advanced tab, you can select a delay between queries. The standard is 100 milliseconds, but you can increase it if you like to. Now, why would you do this? Normally, you don't have to bother with it at all. But uh, if Excelix Pro for some reason has issues for you, you may try to set a longer delay between queries. And this delay is how long in milliseconds it will wait before it sends the next query to the Google Analytics API. You also have something called the bug mode. I encourage you to have it enabled. And you need to select where the log file should be saved. When you click here, you get the ordinary um, dialog box for selecting a location for a file. So you could put your file in, say, Documents. The good thing about the bug mode is that if you sometimes have issues and you need support, if you attach the debug file with your um, ticket to us, it will be much easier and faster and accurate for us to help you. And the last tab is License Key. 
Xmix Pro is available in a generous free trial, so for a number of days in the beginning you do not enter a license key at all. But this you should know where to find once it's time to buy a license if you want to continue to use the Pro edition of Xmix. Now, um, we don't request a credit card or anything when signing up and trying it, so there are no strings attached. There's really no reason not to try it. And if you're on a Mac, what you should know that despite the fact that Xmix Pro was created to be used in Excel in Windows, you can still run it on a Mac. Use Parallels Desktop or VMware, and you can run uh, Windows alongside with OS X. Now, in this demo, for instance, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm using Parallels Desktop on a Mac. So don't let your OS restrict you from using Xmix Pro. So when you're logged in and when you get started, what you do is you click New Query. In this dialog, first of all, you have to give a name to your query. It could be anything you like it to be. So um, let's go with uh, this is per country, for instance. The next thing I'm going to select here is a starting cell. So a starting cell is where the query will start to be written from. So pre-selected here is cell A1. Currently you can't click on a cell to uh, select it. What you need to do is you need to enter the information here. So if I wanted to start from say B1, I have to enter here B1. And target sheet is which sheet you want it to be saved to because uh, your Excel workbox usually contains several sheets. I'm going to save it to uh, sheet one for the sake of this example. So I click OK. The query editor opens and you can see the name of my query. If I would have made several queries for this sheet already or this workbook, they would have been listed here. You can see the start cell still. You can see the target sheet. And if I click transpose, what that does is actually the same as a transpose function for pasting in Excel, if you're familiar with that. Normally I'd say you don't want to use it, but there are circumstances where you may want to use it. Profiles, you select which profile to be using. First of all, account, and this is so it's easier to sort for you. So I'm going to look at the Xmix account, which is a GA account that I have access to. And I want to look at the xlinux.com profile. For you, this would be your own account and your own profile it could be anything. So I can add it. And actually, I can run a query for multiple profiles at once. So say, I want to also look at, um, let's say, Analytics Manifesto. I can add that as well. See, the list of profiles gets updated. And I can add several profiles for this query here. I next select a date range. I can either use the pre-selected ones like today or last week if you want to have ISO week or American week or if you want to have last month or last quarter or you can select a custom date range where you will set it to anything you like. And then you have metrics. This should be quite familiar for you. Also, what could be good to know is that you can adjust the size of this dialog if you so wish. So uh, for the sake of this example, I'm going to go into Metrics Visitor. Now if I click this box, all everything in it will be selected. But if I just go underneath here and I click Visitors, I can select a single metric. If I add several metrics, I can change the sort order for them by clicking here. And this is by sort order in this case, I mean in which order they will be presented in the fetched query. And you have dimensions. And I'm going to go for geo. I said I would get visitors per country, so I'm going to select country here. Same thing here. Say if I add, I want to also know uh, city. I can change the order of how they're going to be shown here. Okay. If I don't want to have seed anymore, I deselect it. Segments, next tab. 
Here you can select any of the segments that you created in Google Analytics that are attached to this account. So um, you get a number of default segments. If you created your own segments, you'll have them here as well. So I could, for instance, choose just to look at uh, mobile traffic. Then there's filters. And it pretty much works uh, like filters in Google Analytics. So um, yeah, you just say the different criteria for this query to uh, include visits. And this is how you build it. Say, um, I only want to include Mm -hmm. We can take, um, I only want to include people that have a browser that is Chrome. I can add it like this. And for sorting, I can decide in which order to uh, sort the result. So, uh, for instance, I want to have it by sorted by the dimension country. And I want to have it sorted in ascending order or descending order. If I don't like it, I can remove it. If I want to have a second sort order, I can say, okay, I also want to sort it by visitors. And I want to sort it by visitors descending. Oops, I changed my mind. I don't want to have visitors as a sorting criteria. Okay, I remove it. Limits. If you fetch all rows in a result, Excel Pro will keep on asking Google Analytics to return data until all your data has been um, sent back to you and shown in Excel Analytics in Excel. Now, you can also limit your result. For instance, if you want to just get from, say, data from the first row to the first 100 rows, that's possible as well. Okay. Once you're ready to run your query, you click Execute. You'll be asked if you want to clear any cell formatting. You may have like used different colors or you might have used bold or maybe uh, you selected a specific setting for how many uh, decimals something should have. All that will be lost unless you save formatting. And um, if your computer is set to English, it will say yes and no. So let's see, clear any cell formatting. Hmm. It's okay to clear cell phone warning because this is the first query I make in the sheet. If I would have made query to be safe, you would say no. And you'll see a little status of what's happening. Now the query has been returned. You also have a row here that says contains sample data. False. This means that this data returned here is not sampled. If it would have been sampled, it would have said contains sample data true. Um, for some reason, there's no mobile traffic for this time period for the analytics manifesto, so that's why that query is empty. Now, what you see now is that you have a possibility to refresh sheet or to refresh workbook. Refreshing sheet means refreshing all the queries on one sheet. Refreshing workbook means refreshing all queries on all the sheets in the workbook. So this is automation in Excelix Pro. If I just want to uh, refresh one query, I can select it like by putting the, the cursor on the uh, marking or marking the first cell in it. And then I click refresh query. So, for example, let's take refresh sheet. You refresh the sheet, all queries on the sheet, based on, say, a new custom date range. There might be a new month, or you want to go from looking at a quarter to looking um, for a whole year, or looking just a single month. Here, select a date range, and it will be applied to all your queries in the, in the sheet when you refresh. Okay. Also, see what happens here when I mark the first cell for the query. The copy query button is lit up. That means I can copy a query and I can paste it to a new cell. 
copy paste so why would you do that well maybe you want to just make small adjustments to a query and run it several times you can always go back into the query editor here you can all always find all your queries you select the query you want to edit then you go in and you change whatever you want to change and you run execute again before you start to use Excel Analytics Pro you should know that you need to have some software installed so if you look at Excel Analytics Pro tutorial on the Amplify website you'll find more information about how to use the tool but if you go to the main page for Excel Analytics Pro where you download it from you'll find a list of required software to use it So make sure you have all of this installed on your computer if you're going to use it. That's it. Happy analyzing.